Hey kids and parents, thanks for joining me today for our story. Before we get started on that, I have a couple of announcements I wanted to make sure that you knew about. You've probably seen them in my newsletter, but just in case you haven't, I wanted to give you uh, some more details. This coming Sunday, November the 29th, there will be a congregational meeting during the Sunday school hour. And so that our Sunday school teachers can attend the meeting, Zach and I are gonna teach Sunday school. And one of the things we'll be doing is making an Advent wreath. Um, so if you would like to participate in that, please find the sign up in my um, recent newsletter. I'll also ask that our uh, that Jen Hopkins post it on the website as well, so you can sign up um, to participate. And if you don't feel comfortable coming and having your child in Sunday school, then I am happy to leave you. Um, a set of the Advent wreath making materials on the front porch um, after the service, the 11 o'clock service. Um, so that's the first announcement. And then the second announcement is regarding the following Saturday, December 5th, holiday bazaar and Advent craft event. I'm sure you have seen um, communication from Dawn and I on that. So we would love to have you. It's a great thing to invite friends to as well. So if you are interested in coming, sign up. And then we will also have the materials for the kids craft to take home as well if you um, prefer to do it at home, which is great. It's like a um, really pretty, um, so you get a jar and then do like a luminary. Uh, there are some nativity stickers that you put on the outside and then um, a candle, like a battery operated candle that goes on the inside. So it'd be really sweet in their rooms. Uh, or if you want to give it to a neighbor or someone else, that's an option too. And then the last announcement is our Bethlehem walk, which is December the 18th and 19th. It's a Friday and Saturday night from six to eight 30. You can sign up for a particular slot so that we can space people accordingly and uh, it doesn't get too crowded. And you will walk through the parking lot to the different stations where different Stony Point people are performing the part of the Christmas story for you. And there are going to be animals, live animals. Really excited about that part. So we hope that you can join us again. That's a great thing to bring your neighbors to. Uh, someone who may just need a little bit of extra Christmas spirit, as we all do this year. So... Um, I think that's all my announcements. Today we are going to read story 66, Naaman is Cured from 2 Kings 5. And I just, I love our Sunday school curriculum and how it points to Jesus even in the Old Testament stories. So listen for that and see if you can think of how the story of Naaman points us to Jesus. All right, here is our picture. Let's get started. During the time Elisha was a prophet, a man named Naaman commanded the army of the king of Syria. So Naaman lived in Syria and Elisha lived in Israel, so two different countries. Naaman was a brave and courageous soldier, but he had a terrible problem that courage could not solve. Naaman suffered from the skin disease of leprosy. Naaman's wife had a servant girl who had been captured in a raid into Israel. So she was an Israelite servant girl. One day she told Naaman's wife that the prophet Elisha could heal Naaman of his disease. When, when Naaman's wife told him about the prophet, he told the king. The king urged Naaman to go to Israel and find Elisha. He even gave Naaman a letter to the king of Israel asking for help. Right away, Naaman left for Israel with a letter, silver and gold and clothing as a payment for his healing. When the king of Israel read the letter, he was afraid and tore his clothes. I am not God, he said. I have no power to heal this man. He forgot about the Lord's prophet. Instead, he thought the letter was a trick by the king of Syria designed to start a fight. When word about the request reached Elisha and he heard that the king had torn his clothes, Elisha sent for Naaman. So Naaman traveled to Elisha's house with his chariots behind him 
carrying the silver and gold. He rode right up to Elisha's door, but Elisha did not come out. Instead, Elisha sent a messenger to tell Naaman to wash in the Jordan River seven times. Then he would be healed. At first, Naaman was angry and refused. He was an important man, and he had traveled a long way. I thought he would come out to me and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand and cure me. Our rivers at home are much better than Israel's rivers. Why can't I wash in one of them and be healed? But his servants urged him to obey Elisha's command. Naaman listened and obeyed the instructions. He washed in the Jordan seven times, and suddenly the leprosy disappeared. Naaman returned to Elisha and said, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. 2 Kings 5.15 5, 5, He offered Elisha a gift, but Elisha refused. Naaman promised to worship the Lord and left for home. When Elisha's servant, Gehazi, saw his master refuse the gifts, he followed Naaman to get something for himself. He lied to Naaman, saying that Elisha needed gifts for two visitors. He asked for some silver and special robes. Naaman was happy to help. But even before Gehazi had returned, the Lord showed Elisha what Gehazi had done. When Gehazi came back, he lied about his meeting with Naaman. Elisha told Gehazi that Naaman's leprosy would now come upon him. Gehazi left Elisha white as snow with leprosy. Jesus told the story of Naaman to show that God's plan of salvation was for all people. In Luke 4.27, Jesus said, There were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. Jesus wanted the Jews who refused to believe in him to know that God had planned to save people from every nation not just the people of Israel. It is by believing in Jesus' death and resurrection that people from every nation can have their sins washed away. All right, here are our questions for today. Why is Naaman standing in the river? That's right, because Elisha told him that that's how he would get the leprosy, get rid of the leprosy, that if he washed in the river, it would go away. What is going to happen to him when he begins to wash? He will be healed of his leprosy. I answered the question before. <laughs> what do we need to do to have all our sins washed away? Can we go down to the James River and wash and um, our sins will just be washed away? No, we can't. We know from the Bible that if we believe in Jesus, then our sins will be washed away. So if you haven't done so, talk to your parents about that and pray with them to accept Jesus into your heart and admit that you are a sinner and that you need washing and his love and grace are for you. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.